I just want to welcome everyone to uh, the Camberley Chess Club weekly Zoom meeting. Um, this week, our presentation is coming all the way from the Isle of Wight um, using the power of the interweb. So with no more ado, I will hand over to Tony Williams. Good evening, everyone. And uh, the subject Hi. of tonight's little talk <gasps> is uh, Tiger and Petrosian. And uh, Tiger and Petrosian was born in Tbilisi in 1929 and won the World Championship in 1963, uh, defeating Mikhail Botvinnik. Um, he held the title until 1969 when he lost it to Boris Spassky. Uh, so he did, in fact, also play a match against Spassky in 1966, which he won. And um, has a reputation of being perhaps a sort of turgid, very dull player and very cautious and, uh, you know, prone to, you know, drawing many games. Um, but I'd like to take the opportunity this evening of uh, dispelling that myth and demonstrating some of his attacking games. Um, and again, start off by going through sort of two miniatures. Um, and I think with the uh, invitation that's sent out, there was a couple of positions which, uh, you know, you might have had a chance to have a look at. Uh, you know, please don't sort of stick them on the computer and solve them because they're, they're quite fascinating um, to find in, you know, to find the uh, continuations in their own right. But a little bit of, before we get into the games, a little bit of the history of uh, Tiger and Petrosian. Um, he was a world candidate, uh, played in the candidates on eight separate uh, occasions um, over a 20-year cycle. Um, and in Olympiads, he had an amazing record of only ever losing one game in 129 games played, 78 wins, won, uh, 50 draws and one loss, and that loss was to Robert Hubner. You know, which is quite a phenomenal achievement. Yeah, sure, in Olympiads, you're going to be playing a whole range of players. But at the end of the day, um, that is still an impressive record. And, you know, probably it's overshadowed by Botvinnik because he was the world champion, really, from sort of late, you know, you know from the late 40s all the way through the 1950s. You know, I would say he's a world champion all that time, but he sort of certainly dominated Soviet chess along with Smyslov and Karev. And then, you know, after him comes, uh, you know, sort of Spassky, then Fischer, and then Karpov, you know, and uh, Kasparov, all of whom, you know, have had sort of very long and, uh, you know, yeah, long careers and perhaps, uh, you know, were sort of thought of as being greater players. Um, but I did look on the Chess Metric website. Um, sadly, it's not current, but I think it stopped being updated about 10 or 15 years ago. And uh, over a 20-year uh, period, uh, Petrosian was ranked, I think, eighth in the world um, you know, for, in terms of the sort of, you know, to give you some indication of his longevity, uh, which is, you know, quite an impressive achievement. And as I said, he had a reputation for being a sort of very cautious and highly defensive player. Um, he was influenced quite heavily by uh, Aaron Nimzovich and his ideas of prophylaxis. prophylaxis whereby you're trying to stop your opponent from developing threats rather than carrying out activities of your own. And he very rarely played any offensive uh, sort of chess or attacking chess unless he was completely secure of the position and would win a lot of games against aggressive opponents by securing, um, you know, small advantages and sort of playing sort of, you know, sort of quite cautiously um, and as I said, his um, style of play, you know, on occasions was uh, was thought to be quite, uh, quite, you know, quite, quite, uh, you know, sort of conservative. Evening, Paul. Um, the, a couple of quotations about Titan Petrosian. Um, Gary Kasparov, in his book uh, My Great Predecessors, said that in the in years when um, he was at his best, it was probably easier to win the Soviet Championship than to win a game against Petrosian. And Boris Spassky quote, uh, said uh, quite, quite famously, uh, it's to Petrosian's advantage that his opponents never know when he's going to suddenly start playing like Mikhail Tal, because he could play aggressive chess. He was a renowned uh, blitz player, and then when he played blitz, he would play phenomenal you know, complex tactical games and see the tactics just as well or better than other players. But he chose to play in this conservative style, which, which as I say, suited him. 
So the first game we're going to go uh, sort of show you um, is a miniature, and it was played against Ludek Pacman in the sort of bled tournament in 1960, 1961. So if we go to, sort of, I'm just going to set this up and hope this goes well. So if I get it right, um, and pull up that one. Now, if that's worked, then you should all see a chessboard. Okay, so I'm now going to start to go through the game. And the game starts off with one knight f3, and Pacman plays c5, g3, knight c6, bishop g2, g6, castles, bishop d g7, d3, e6, e4, knight g7, rook e1, and castles. And here we have a king's Indian attack. Uh, just bear with me for a second. Okay. And uh, I think this is an opening which you know, so a lot of people play. I mean, I personally have played it myself against the French defence. Um, it, it can be a very tricky opening to face. Um, very, very good for playing sort of quick play games because you can rattle off 12, 15 moves in, in next to no time. And uh, next move played by White uh, with, a, uh, with E5, which was considered to be a novelty at the time. Um, so previous game I could find in this line was between Botvinnik and Furman, which uh, which carried which continued with e3. Um, let's go back. Carried up, carried on with c3, e5, a3, d5, b4, and continued in that sort of in that sort of vein. But the chip move played on this occasion by Petrosian was e5. Now, White would often play the pawn to e5 and then overprotect it with moves like bishop f4, queen e2. And uh, as Black has yet to play the move d5, um, it does make it quite tr you know, There was a, you know, problems with playing that, that continuation straight away. And in fact, the best op best move here for Black would be to play b6 rather than d6. But in the game, uh, Pacman continues with uh, d6. And after taking on d d6 and Queen takes d6, um, Knight bd2. Now, obviously, we're coming into knight c4 with a tempo, so Pacman retreats his queen back to c7. And now white plays knight b3. Tony, can I just ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, away. After, after e5, if black had played d5, would, would it have been white's intention to play e takes d6 anyway? Or? Um, probably. Uh, we, we're getting into some of the more sort of standardised lines. Um, but I think the notes I found are sort of basically found the uh, the Botnik firm game. Um, if we go back to that position, um, yeah. If you if you play sort of d5 here, so I play then, I imagine you will continue with possibly bishop f4 and start rerouting the knight round from round to sort of the queen's knight round to uh, d2 and f1. And we might get you know. Um, now, if there's anybody here who knows a lot of the theory about this line, then please sort of chip in. Um, but that's, that's obviously one option. Um, or as you say, um, you, might, you may well continue by taking on, taking on d6 anyway. So, yeah. But the game continues uh, with uh, e takes uh, d6, queen d6, knight bd2, queen c7, and knight b3. Right. Now, obviously, the uh, c5 pawn is... Um, sort of under threat, and Black now plays knight to d4, which was considered to be, um, you know, sort of second best. Uh, b6 was a better option with the line of playing bishop to f4 and queen to b7 and knight e5. And, uh, you know, white has a little bit of a space advantage, but uh, the position is, is probably still equal or maybe marginally better. Uh, it's like microscopically better for white. Uh, but after knight d4, uh, white now plays bishop to f4, and queen comes out to b6. Now I'm going to go through the first two games quite quickly because I think I want to go demonstrate four games tonight, and the last one um, is, is quite a long game. Uh, so after queen b6, 
white now plays knight e5 and black captures on b3 and a takes b3. Oh, sorry, there's a, rather than playing a takes b3 straight away, white now plays the knight to c4. And queen comes to, b, uh, to b5 and a takes b3. So if we look at this position, um, white's got you know, maybe some space advantage here. The A file has been opened, and uh, you know, maybe again, you would say that white is perhaps marginally better here. So, after A takes B3, uh, black plays A5, and now white plays uh, bishop into D6. So obviously, um, hitting the knight that's on pre, and black now plays bishop to F6 which was a mistake and should have continued by playing uh, rook to e8, defending the knight. But after bishop f6, white now plays queen f3, hitting the bishop, and black defends it with king to d7. So I think this is the position that uh, I sent out uh, with the invite. So. What should white play in this position? I looked at this, I thought queen takes bishop was good. Queen takes bishop it actually is a false win, but actually wasn't the move played. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Um, but yeah, queen takes f6 wins immediately because white has a false win. I'll show you the move. That was played the moves that were played in the game and then would come back to queen f6 yeah um, might might have been the case that both players actually miss this for a move but white continues with rook e4 and now black continues with rook to d8 um, i think knight uh knight to uh, d5 would have been played mm -hmm. continue but now white played queen f6 mm -hmm. and after king f6 Bishop e5. Uh, the king can't treat back and only, have, only move forward. So it goes to g5. And what should white play here? Bishop g7 is interesting. <laughs> yes, that is the move play. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. I couldn't work it out exactly, but I thought bishop g7 must be something to do with it because you've got to stop the king coming back around to h6. Well, that's right. Now the, the king can't retreat onto any of the black squares, and uh, you know the game is uh, will be over very shortly because after bishop g7, uh, white. I think what uh, sort of black continued with knight f5, yeah, f4 check, king to uh, yeah, sort of king comes into g4, knight e5, king comes to h5, and. The final move of the game is white plays bishop to f3 mate. Right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, Ludwig Pacman was very, you know, was a very strong uh, sort of player, sort of GM at the time this game was played. And, uh, you know, we sort of, there we are, beaten in 23 moves. So, <laughs> I'll go back to... Tony, I've just got, in, in the Vasiliev book, they yeah. actually, uh, they actually go through this game. Yeah. And uh, there's a note at the end, which is quite interesting. It says, um, curiously, this was not the only game in which Petrosian sacrificed his queen against Pacman. But whereas in the above example, the sacrifice served purely tactical ends, in the earlier game, it, it had a more position, complex positional character. And it gives the score of a game um, from Porter Ros, 1958. All right. Uh, Pacman Petrosian, which was an old Indian. Mm -hmm. And he sacked his Petrosian sacked his queen, but uh, not to deliver mate. It was for uh, positional gains. Positional gains. Yeah. Oh, right. I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Um, and it was an, it was an old Indian, which Petrosian he was a big fan of the old Indian defence. Right. Anyway, there we are. I just thought I'd mention it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Okay, I'll just go back and show the variation after after queen takes f6, rather than uh, 
rather than just rook e4. So after queen takes f6, king takes f6, bishop e5, and king g5, and bishop e7 again. And again, we, we still have the same threats coming in. And I think the line that uh, the sort of Fritz found was rook g8, f4, king to g4, and again, knight e5, and bishop f3. So uh, that was uh, the very, very... Yeah, I and just to know, if king f5, Sorry. then knight d6 well. picks up the queen, yeah. even if you even if you don't mate. Sorry, um, I think I, I couldn't quite hear because I think you both both sort of start at the same time there. So uh, yeah. I, was just saying, I was just saying, if king comes forward to f5 instead of going to g5, yeah. then knight d6 picks up. The no, queen. knight e 3 is mate. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Ninety F three is even stronger. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Knight comes into e three. Yeah. No, I meant I meant after uh, I meant after Bishop e five check. Right. King. Well, you're coming. If you're coming in here, you mean uh, coming in here now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I, I there might be a mate, but um, is Bishop H three mate? Yeah. Uh, which makes for Bishop. No. no um, I think you just still play Bishop Bishop G seven. And um, I mean I think here surely um White has Bishop White has still play Bishop to G seven. Um and you've got Bishop E four check as a move as well. You've got rookie five check coming in. Yeah. Yeah, I think rookie five check and after king g4, you've got f3 or h3s, mate. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, I, I'm sure there's many other other ways to win that position, but uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> okay. So that was uh, the first game. Okay. And the second game that I wanted to, I want to sort of show you is another miniature. And this was played against uh, Rida Balhadi in a France and USR, USSR match in 1954. And it was a game that I found in a book that I recently reviewed uh, for John, which is a book um, on, the, on the King's Indian according to Tiger and Petrosian. And it's another miniature. Um, Balhadi at the time, probably not much stronger than a good international monster. But what impressed me about this game was that how Petrosian chose to exchange um, one pair of minor pieces and completely uh, knock out Black's ability to defend his position. So uh, we'll get underway. And this is, a, as it's from the King's Indian book, this will be a King's Indian opening. So uh, we start out with, uh, bear with me for a second. Yes. E4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, and f3. f3 takes us into the same defence. And one thing I did discover when I was doing the uh, review for this book is that this, this line uh, was a line that Petrosian uh, scored ex exceedingly well with, um, probably 100, 150 ELO points above his rating. Um, he's very, very successful uh, with, this, with this line. And also remember, this game was played in 1954. So the theory for this opening uh, was still under development, really. Um, yeah, castles, bishop to e3, e5. And white has several options at this point. Um, so knight g2 is the common move. And the other main, main line here is to play d5 straight away. Uh, white just has, you know, the space advantage. That's very, very solid structure, and black has got to find a way of undermining and gaining counterplay against it. Now, I think nowadays um, the best two moves for black to play are either knight h5 or to play c6. But the move chosen by Balhadi was c5, and this is considered to be a mistake because white now has. Um, a very, very good, you know, very good attacking options on the king side. And the move played by Petrosian was g4. And black now plays knight to e8. 
Now, at this point, um, H4 is coming in, and these positions are very, very tricky to defend, I think. Um, I, I myself, over the years, played a lot of um, sort of perks and moderns and King's Indians, and always felt that if uh, white gets G4 and H4 in, and can manoeuvre the knight the king's knight round to g3 or something that and his attack is invariably very very strong and this sort of thing happens in this, in this game um h4 is one option but the move chosen by trojan uh was queen d2 um the opening book that i've got in front of me uh now has uh ha now has this shown white with a, a chance of winning of 66 percent which is which is pretty good um so the black move played by black now was f5. Fairly standard idea in the King's Indian defense to start to sort of gain space on the King's side and to sort of try and undermine white's form structure. Uh, white now plays g takes f5 and g takes f5. And we now have a open g file. Um, at this point, um, you know, white hasn't castled that has castle, but I think, uh, as time will tell, um, he's going to be very, very weak on those black squares. But White now uh, castles queenside, so it's quite clearly uh, we're going to have a game where White is going to be attacking up the king's side, and Black is going to try and perhaps uh, get um, a6 and b5 in and uh, start to open lines on the queenside. So Black now plays a6 to uh, start his queenside attack. Uh, white carries on with h4. Um, h4 is going up the board. And, you know, they, those, uh, those black squares are gonna be sort of looking very, very weak. Uh, black now decides to play a pawn sacrifice. Uh, plays b5, opening up lines on the queenside. So, White accepts the sacrifice, a, a C takes B5, A takes B5, and Bishop B5. Um, Black now has the open, G, open A file and open B file. And the position, you know, may be a bit similar to a sort of Benko Gambit, whereby Black has um, you know, a lot of play along those open, open lines. So Black will now play Bishop to A6. Um, now, this is the second position that uh, was on the invite. And the question is, how should white continue? So I'll throw it open to the floor. There. What do you think white should play here? The first you know, in the last game was a tactical solution. This is more of a uh, positional solution. Well, I was thinking you should play bishop takes knight to uh, prevent the knight supporting the king side. Yeah, that was the move chosen. Yeah, I mean, taking the bishop really, I think, plays into black's hands because you're, uh, you know, basically allowing the, uh, the lines to be opened up on the queen side and to develop either the rook or the knight. But in fact, the move played by White here was bishop takes e8. And as Steve pointed out, um, it removes a key defender from uh, Black's king side in that, that that knight is no longer able to defend a bishop on g7. And as we see in the sort of uh, in the moves to follow, that White develops a very, very strong attack. So after bishop e8, queen e8, and bishop h6. So uh, that bishop is now starting to look quite vulnerable. So black defends it with rook to a7. And now white plays knight to h3, opening up space for the other rook to come across the inside. Uh, black plays rook f6. And I think it's the second time that um, the analysis has pointed out that perhaps a good move for black would have been to play f4 and close down that diagonal. Would have made his defensive task easier. I mean, White is still better here, but um, that wasn't the move chosen. So after Rook F6, White now plays Rook D G1, and Black now plays Bishop C8. So again, 
Spurred in the option of playing F4. So, uh, <coughs> so here, um, white now continues with bishop g5. Just bear with me for a second. And black now has to retreat the rook, and retreats all the way back to f8. Whether or not it was better to defend a bishop laterally by playing rook f7 is, uh, is a moot point. Uh, white will still continue with h5 back, black can then play king to h8, breaking the pin. Um, I think it'll still be favouring white here, but uh, that wasn't what, what was played. So at this juncture, White now plays h5. Just spare me. Sorry, folks, I'm just uh, sorting my mouse out. Yeah. So, sacrificing the pawn. Now, if uh, white takes a pawn, then, uh, sorry, black takes a pawn, then white has knight b5 hitting the d6 pawn. So that wasn't the move that Black chosen. Black did now took the opportunity of breaking the pin by playing king to h8. And White now plays knight f2. So that h pawn is uh, heading, you know, sort of moving up the board quite rapidly. Uh, Black doesn't find the best move here and plays knight a6. Uh, bishop f6 was a better option uh, with bishop f6, rook f6, and perhaps, you know, there are ways to defend this position, but it's, uh, you know, so white definitely is the one doing the attacking. But, uh, after knight a6, then white will con continue with, he takes f5, and, bishop, and uh, that's, you know, sort of, you know, sort of black now uh, continues with e4. Uh, Unfortunately, missing the fact that white has this move f6, and after bishop f6, bishop takes f6, rook f6, and knight e4, and black resigns. Um, you know, he's going to be a couple of pawns down, and that uh, king side is, is, is looking quite, uh, quite vacant. So, uh, I mean, the one reason I wanted to show this game was for the yeah, there's the move of uh, bishop takes e8. So I felt that when I saw this game, I was, re I was really, really quite impressed with this concept in that it just took away the key defensive pieces from Black's position. And uh, yeah, White's attack flowed quite, quite smoothly after that. So uh, that, was, uh, that was sort of two miniatures. Um, I mean, this game is 25 moves, the previous one 23 moves, so plus technically not quite miniatures. But it sort of showed Petrosian in, in a sort of attacking light, you know, somebody who was in this game was quite happy to take on a very sharp um, you know, sort of opening and to sort of play it very aggressively. Um, so it really sort of wanted to show there was this side to his plays who wasn't just the sort of player who plays these sort of very long and very technical games. So that was the second game that uh, wanted to show you tonight. Um, now I'm going to show you an, uh, two more games and the next game is what I would call a more typical Petrosian game where it is quite a long technical game um, there are sort of knights moving backwards and all sorts of other things happening in it which is the sort of you know what you would perhaps uh, more associate with with typing Petrosian. Now the next game was played quite early on in uh, Petrosian's career and his opponent uh, Kalantar now, I have not been able to find out any information about this player. Um, whereas I think there was a fair bit of information around of, about his uh, other opponents. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, um, Rida Belhadi uh, was an international master from Tunisia and eventually was the president of the Tunisian Chess Federation. And he represented them in the Olympiads from 1960 right, right up to 1980. And uh, mentioned just as just mentioned, I haven't been able to find out any information about uh, Petrosian's opponent in this game. But this is what uh, I would describe as perhaps being a more sort of typical uh, sort of Petrosian style game. And uh, Petrosian has black in it, 
and uh, yeah, um, the sort of white opens up with one d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, and bishop b4. Um, so here we have uh, sort of Bogo Indian. Yeah. Now I won't claim to know any theory or anything. anything anything about these openings because I, there, there aren't ones that I played play sort of either with the black or the white pieces. I'm sure there's play, people here who know these openings much, much better than, than I would. Um, I think white has sort of three options here, uh, bishop d2, knight c3, and knight bd2 is the main option. But in this game, uh, white chooses bishop d2, uh, black plays queen e7. Why play? Right. Uh, white now plays g3, uh, knight c6, mm. uh, bishop g2, and at this point uh, chooses to exchange the bishops, which apparently apparently is the uh, is the sort of most common option. I guess white's going to be castling uh, sort of quite shortly. Knight bd2, castles, castles, and here white chooses d6, which I think is the main the main main uh, uh, sort of main move. Uh, white continues with e4, and I think e5 is uh, the most most common reply here. But the move chosen in the game was a5, and white chooses knight. Uh, white chooses queen c2. And I think a previous game before this, uh, rookie one was played, uh, but again, sort of this is probably emergent theory from the 40s. Um, so Rosie that, is black, is he? The Trojan is black in this game, yes. Yeah. So, so what would you play here as black? You can either go, you can play e5, and if he plays d5, you take your knight back to b8. Yeah. And the idea is to eventually play a4 and knight c5. That's yeah. one idea. The other idea is to play, you can also play g6. 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 G6 right. is also a sort of plan in these type of positions. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what, what's, the, what's the idea behind uh, G6? Oh, uh, well, one of the ideas is to play F5 at some stage. Sometimes you can even play moves like H5. I've seen that sort of thing played in Bugo Indians. Last okay. played that sort of stuff. Oh, right, right. Okay. It's quite an unusual idea. The most yeah. usual idea is to go E5 and reroute your knight round to c5. Yeah, well that sort of thing, that does happen in this game, but uh, the yeah. move chosen by the Trojan was in fact knight d7. And uh, really? yeah, black does continue with, uh, yeah, with d5, and uh, as Colin pointed out, uh, the c6 knight gets rerouted back to b8. Wow. Yeah. And white plays knight d4. So, you know, mm. one look at this position and think, okay, white has perhaps got a, a bit of a space advantage, but black is very solid. Uh, there's no weaknesses there. All right. So white, you know, it, it, that's where we are. Um, black now continues with knight c5. So in fact, it was the uh, f6 knight that ends up on c5 and not the c6 knight. Uh, mm. White continues with queen c3. And at this point, White decides to close up the position and plays e5. E5, yeah. Yeah. So again, you know, White is very solid here. Sorry, yeah, so Black is very solid here. There's no weaknesses. Um, you know, you've closed the center. You know, you know reduce the scope of White. Uh, you know, sort of g2 bishop. I would have been tempted by White playing f4. Uh, I think the last move, couldn't he? Um, yeah, I mean, if you, the thing is, if you're playing f4, um, and then black play, yeah, um, and then sort of black plays e5, then what do you do? f5. Okay. Um, and then you've got a, a king side attack coming at some point with black's pieces undeveloped and on the queen side. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I would say, I mean, if you're playing f4 and you play e5, you have to have to find a home for the knight first of all. Um, and I think, yes, you've, you've gained that space, but you're not actually following it up with any pieces because if you look where White's pieces are, 
the you know the sort of queen queen's over on c3 um it, it, yeah it's the it's the knight on d4 now uh the knight's on d4 now and i think the move played in the game i mean you're, i mean you're suggesting playing f4 here aren't you martin instead of queen c3 what's the point of queen c3 yeah i didn't understand queen c3 well no um go back another move yeah f4 now, here now can we play f4 yeah right okay um if we play f4 here just looks more aggressive and more. Yeah. Right. Put knight c5 yeah. on the board. Yeah. yeah. Like to move. Yeah. Ah. So, knight c5. Yeah. Sorry, folks. No player four here. Yeah. You're right. You've still got to worry about the knight if he does e e5 now. But anyway, yeah. yeah. It looks. I think. Bit, I think also. It's a bit, um, it's a bit loosening as well, though, isn't it? Mm. Um. Yeah, I think if you play e5, the knight has to move, and then you can capture. And that pawn, you know, that pawn, that's a little bit loose. Yeah, we perhaps follow it up with f5 even. I, I'd capture the pawn and then put my knight on f5. Right. Okay. So if you're saying that if we, in this position, if we play e5, yeah. yeah. yeah pawn takes pawn. Pawn yeah. takes pawn. You want to do that anyway. Yeah. And now, now, yeah, takes back. Now, how do we, how, how do we take back here? Do we take back the queen? Or... No. Or oh, no, I think. I think I'll go knight e5, knight f5 anyway, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just looks better for white now to me, but anyway. Yeah. I'm not sure about that, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what I would say in, um, if I was you know, uh, putting up a case of black's position, if you, if you come back with here, play knight f5. Might be inclined to play knight here, drop the queen back to e7 and play knight e5, um, and that structure. You know, you've got really nice, um, a nice square. You know, you've got you've got control d5 square. That c4 pawn is going to be uh, a little bit weak. So, mm. yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, and uh, you know, if, if no, yeah, so uh, I'm mean, sure it's 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 quite plausible as a game continuation. Um, and I think you'd say strengths and weaknesses with that, uh, you know, with that line. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so after queen c3, move played with e5, and knight comes back to b3. Uh, Black now chooses to play b6. And uh, is quite happy for uh, for white to exchange off a pair of knights there um which uh, which white julie does and black captures back on c5 with a pawn uh, so how would we assess this position well uh, for white i prefer black i prefer black yeah yeah i, I think the black uh the black bishop's better than the white one. Yeah, I mean, this is a theme that comes out of the game. I think um, I ran this through the computer earlier, and I think it's still uh, microscopically better for white. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's all... Black, black's also got the B file, and he's going to get, if, if B3 can play A4, I mean, he's, he's just got play, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, I sort of looked at this position and thought, okay, you know, it now is clear, it's now clear why black was quite happy to play B6 and capture on c5 because you know um fix the pawn center um you know and those pawns on white squares you know there aren't going anywhere it's reducing the scope of of white's bishop um you know it seems seems strange because you've now undeveloped your pieces uh but uh you know i think you know black black is quite okay here uh white now does play a four um black replies with knight to d7 and uh, I think I, I did look through this game earlier, and uh, at this point, yeah, uh, I think the best move here was in fact to play f5. But the move chosen by White was to play bishop to h3. Uh, black plays rook e8, and rook a e1. Black now plays queen to f6. I think again, he's quite happy. Uh, for white to instigate exchanges on e5 because you're going to have uh, control of that square and that e4 pawn is uh, is going to be a bit weak as the game progresses. 
uh, White now makes a decision to start liquidating and begins with trading off the uh, h3 bishop uh, with the knight on d7, which is really the idea you know, behind bishop h3. Um, you know, could probably you know, sort of come to the conclusion that it wasn't going to be a particularly good minor piece to have uh, with that pawn structure. So bishop takes on d7, bishop recaps back on d7, and the uh, liquidation continues with f takes e5. Obviously, queen takes back on e5, queen takes, and rook takes. And white now plays knight to f3. Black moves the rook back to e7. And now white continues the liquidation theme by playing e5. Uh, black plays the rook to e8. And we now have a wholesale liquidation. Uh, the pawn's captured on d6. Rook captures on e1, rook takes e1, rook takes e1, knight e1, and c takes d6. And we now come into an endgame. So given the choice bet between sitting behind the white side of the board or the black side of the board, which would people prefer? Black. 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 Because you've got push, push against knight with an asymmetric pawn structure. Yeah. I think that was a, that's the sort of view that uh, I, I took. But again, the computer assesses the ending as, at this point of being um, being equal. Uh, but I think in terms of practical play, uh, you know, it's a position I think that will be quite happy to play out, play on. Um, you're never going to lose this position, and there's no doubt ways of uh, of going wrong. Well, oh. Matt can establish a part of pawn, which is quite difficult for White to do. Yeah. Three and two on the king side and i think also yeah yeah sorry yeah. yeah and you've got pawns on both sides as well so you know the bishop's going to be a much stronger piece well the bishop's the... coming to f5 and then to b1 isn't it to threaten the white pawn chain yes yeah i mean it's sort of the black the black square black white square bishop has got a lot of scope um and again you know so that you do have those pawns fixed on white squares so uh you know mm -hmm. Yeah. So the game continues with king to f2. And um, what would we play? What would you play here with black? Maybe f5. Yeah. f5 was a move, uh, was a move played. Yeah. And now white, white, conti white continues with king to e3. And king to f7. Knight to d3. Um, and what would we play here for white, for, for black? G5. Yeah. G5. Uh, yeah, I, I thought the G5 was, was going to be played, but uh, the move chosen was push it to C8. Right. Yeah, coming around to A6, which forces white now to play another pawn onto a white square. And uh, once you force that concession out of white, now uh, black plays G5. So what Black has been able to do here is really just gain gain space on the on the king side. Um, you've taken away the f4 square from the knight and also from the king, uh, which is you know, reducing its scope. And we now look at that knight and thinking, okay, you know, where is it going to go? So, so why not put the knight on f4, um, Tony, yeah. first? Yeah. And then not worry about the the bishop threat because you can you can guard it with the king. And okay. And if the bishop moves off that square, e6 square might be quite nice. Yeah. You're thinking of coming here? Mm -hmm. I, I, coming well, here. either guide it, guide him with the pawn or the king, but at least you've yeah. moved your knight. Okay, if I, if I now come to g5, you're saying coming with knight to... Yep. I'll probably, I'll probably go back and play b3 instead of king d3, actually, but anyway, yeah. Okay. But if it, uh, well, so at this position, after bishop c8, you're just playing knight f4. Yeah, hit yeah, it with G five straight away. Yeah, I think I think as Paul's oh, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I thought a very subtle move this bishop C eight. Mm. Um, sorry, that's. Yeah. 
if it does force that concession, mm. but little by little, uh, whites now have to, you know, white, white now has to put all these pawns onto, you know, put all these queenside pawns onto white squares. Still not easy to win for black. Um, it's not. The thing is, is that um, black is able to increase the scope of his bishop in this position and eventually um, sort of uh, come through by, by virtue of the fact he can get his king into e5. So um, the game continues with g5, king f3, uh, king f6, uh, king to e3, bishop comes to d7. Now, not only um, has the bishop, you know, dropped back to c8 to force the b3 move, and I think other people pointed out, um, you know, if you can come into b1 or on that diagonal, uh, then, you know, white's going to have problems. But it's now going to be rerouted re round to e8 and around to h5. Yeah. Oh, I thought you'd go to g6. Yeah, yeah and f4. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, also, that's also a threat. So uh, after king f3, bishop comes, drops back to e8, king e3 and h6. Just a little waiting move. Uh, king comes to uh, back to f3, and now bishop to h5 check. King to e3, and bishop to d1. Now it's starting to look a bit tricky. King uh, drops back to you know, d2, and white, and so black now plays bishop to f3. Now, what would you do here as white? King e3. Funnily enough, that was a move played, and that is considered to be a mistake. Oh, yeah, because he plays bishop e4. Bishop e4, yeah. So, mm. um, in fact, the, uh, you know, uh, the sort, of, uh, sort of Fritz gave knight b2 as being the best move with equality, but uh, king d3 for king e3, and uh, black now plays bishop to e4 and now all of a sudden uh, you've got threats to uh, sort of infiltrate by capturing on d3 and playing king e5 yeah so right. yeah very good so right. yeah so now uh, black really has to make a waiting, you know, makes a waiting move of king d2, and again knight b2 was uh, was a better was a better choice here. But after king d2, uh, black exchanges off. Hang on, what's that here? Sorry, folks. Um, right. yeah, sorry. Um, just getting used to to. Uh, so you're sort of using this uh, this uh, this stuff, but yeah, I mean here now, uh, black is able to penetrate by first of all exchanging off the bishop for the knight and playing king e5, and uh, it's pretty much all over now mm -hmm. because after king e3, black has f4, g takes g takes king f3, king f5, king f2, king e4. King e2, f3, king e king f2, king f4, h4, h5, a3, and king e4. And uh, white resigned at this point. So, <laughs> yeah. I thought that was actually just sort of a very well played, what, what I call like a typical uh, sort of Petrosian type game. He's happy to sort of go backwards, play very solidly. And uh, then exploit, you know, the sort of inaccuracies in White's endgame play. And uh, you know that that endgame, in fact, did turn out well, did turn out well for him. So that's uh, that's game number three. Um, I've got one more game to show. Hey, Tony, yes. uh, I'm going to suggest that we. Uh, I'm going to pause the recording. Okay. I was going to suggest actually that we have a break because. Uh, the next game is quite a long, uh, quite a long game. And okay. okay, now we're part two. Um, over to you, Tony. Okay, and the fourth and final game 
that I want to uh, present tonight is a game played between Tycoon Petrosian and uh, I'm trying to remember, just bear with me for a second. I think what God is Chris, yes, Carlos, yes. Um, and his opponent in this game is Carlos Grimard. And Carlos Grimard is an Argentinian grandmaster. And this game is played in oh, the 1956 Gothenburg in the, uh, Interzonal Tournament and was played in round 14. Now, for any chess historians out there, <laughs> what was special about round 14 of the Gothenburg Interzonal in 1956? Well, I do know the answer. I don't know if anyone else yeah. wants to say anything, but... I'll drop a hint. This is where the Argentinian national team played the same line of the Nidorf. Yes, it is. Um, yes. On block, um, encouraged, encouraged by Miguel Nidorf, of course. Yes. And I think um, it's Oscar Pano. I'll, 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 come to, I'll, I'll go through it all because it's, uh, it's actually quite an interesting story. That um, in this round of the, uh, of the event, there were four pairings where white had white white players were russians and the black players were argentinians and this game between petrosian and guimard and the three other pairings were paul kerish against miguel nadolf uh, yefim geller against oscar pano and the young boris Spassky against Herman pilnich and the other three games um, became known as the famous triple games because the Argentinian team had prepared a very sharp line of the Nadolf. Um, now, I don't know anything about Nadolf theory. I you know, never played it and uh, you know, wouldn't even dream of playing anything as complex as that. But there was a line that they, a very sharp line they prepared mm. uh, in the Bishop G5 variation uh, by playing the move 9G5. And I think a game took place earlier in the tournament. Uh, I think between Kerish and uh, sort of Nadolf, and uh, they won that. So the Argentinians went away and did some prep, and uh, all three players sat down against their Russian opponents and reeled off the uh, the sort of reeled off their theory. Unfortunately for them, um, Effing Geller mm. found a really sharp uh, sacrifice at the board, and a couple of moves later, Paul Kerish found an improvement or actually found an absolute killer as further sacrifice so you have these three games that pretty much followed from uh, sort of followed each other up to about move 20 and ended up with three victories for the soviet players and three losses for the argentinian players um, now i think the line has subsequently been refuted uh, but there's a sort of you know it's a fascinating story and I mean, there's lots of occasions of double games or duplicate games played at different times, but I don't think there's any other instance of uh, three games you know, being played at the top level, whereby the games followed each other pretty much move for move. Um, I've, got until, yeah. I've got a feeling that Geller played 14, Knight takes e6, didn't he? I think, yeah, I think it's, I think it might, it's either 13 or 14, Knight takes e6. Just, I've, got the, I've actually got the games up in front of me. And I uh, think they came to the conclusion that Rook A7 on the previous move would have been level for Black. Yeah, but I think it's Kerish found um, Kerish found a move Bishop B5, sacking his um, sacking his bishop because I think the line White's King was on F8, um, and I think that that sort of busted the uh, the Argentinians' analysis. Yeah, I think subsequently it was refuted, but uh, you know. <laughs> There's always an arms race in those extremely sharp openings. Um, but in the game we're going to look at, uh, uh, Petrosian considered this to be one of his uh, sort of best or little finest attacking games. Now, bear that in mind when we start off and go through it, because uh, it doesn't look that way as the game, uh, as the game unfolds. But uh, Petrosian's white opens with one C4, and... Black plays knight c6, knight c3, e6, d4, d5, and we have a queen's gambit, uh, which is the uh, topic of a Netflix series which has just come out. And I don't know if anyone has uh, seen it yet, but uh, it's definitely. Yeah, I'm watching it. Yeah. It's quite good. 
I watched yeah. it all. I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for those of you who have seen it all, um, I think there's a there's a very good um, sort of YouTube channel uh, by a Croatian guy called Agad Marta. Yep. He, he's actually yeah. done a um, a video of the game of the very very last game in that uh, series, and uh, they've actually found the game it's based on, um, and also all the allusions to other world champions and a lot of other stuff. So. Once you watch the series, go and watch the uh, Agamata uh, mm. uh, sort of video. It's well, well worth a watch. But anyway, back to the game. Knight f3, bishop e7. Um, white chooses a very, um, you know, not necessarily popular option. Uh, so I think the main moves here are bishop e5 and bishop f4, but just chooses to play a very solid e3. Now, I don't know much about um, sort of Guimard as a player, whether or not he was a you know, sort of great tactician or, or, or whether or not Petrosian just sort of fancied uh, playing a very solid game this day, but uh, not a move we normally see in the Queen's Gambit. Uh, anyway, the game continues with Black Castling. White plays Bishop d3. He takes c4. Bishop takes c4 and c5. Uh, but we know end up going into a uh, Queen's Gambit accepted type of position rather than Queen's Gambit declined, which is a little unusual. So castles a6, a4, and knight c6. Um, obviously, um, by playing a4, white weakens his b4 square, which gives black the opportunity of putting knight to b4 actually exercising some more control over d5. Uh, white plays b3. Hang on. Um, just bear with me for a second. Where's my mask gone to? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this isn't the, the best move in this opening. Um, and in fact, my opening's book does say that black actually um, does score very well from this position. So... Black continues with uh, C takes D4 and uh, um, just having one or two minor technical difficulties here. So, yeah. Um, Me? No, no, no we, all, you all, we all haven't actually. Uh, uh, just go. Now, sorry, folks, just having a bit of technical problems here. Um, Don't worry. No, just bear with me for a moment. Sorry. I'm, ha I'm having some issues with chess base. So, Don't worry, Tony, we'll edit it all out. Okay, cool. Right. I'm going to go back to the position. Okay, I think we seem to have uh, got control back. And, okay, we now... I've got to a point where uh, black has played 10b3 after white's move 9, knight to c6. Um, and we continue with c takes d4. e takes d4 and knight b4. Okay, I'm just saying some... Yeah. I just think there's a bit of... I, I, what it is, I've got some... I've got the engine up, and I think it's a bit laggy this time, so I'm going to stop that at the moment. So I, uh, I did want the engine up on this because it does get quite complex later. So um, knight to knight to e5, bishop to d7, bishop to b2, and bishop to c6. Now we've got what appears to be it's almost sort of um, you know, queen's gambit accepted type of position, uh, where black has got uh, control over d5, white has the uh, isolated queen's pawn, which gives him some advantages and some disadvantages. So the advantages for white are the fact that he has control over the c5 and e5 squares, um, but the disadvantages of black has control over the d5 square. Um, are, these, these positions are sort of quite complex, and uh, you know, there's some people that like playing them and uh, others don't. It's, it's a matter of personal taste. Uh, white continues now with queen to d2. Um, black plays knight back from b4 into d5. 
uh, white captures on c6. We take c6. And uh, again, we've had a change in the in the pawn structure. Yeah, is the uh, is the pawn on c6 going to be strong or weak? Yeah, so we shall see. We shall see. Uh, white continues here with knight to a2. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Not a move we would expect, actually. Wow. Knight yeah. to a2. Yes. Right. Yeah. I think some of the moves I, I didn't understand in this game. Um, now, whether or not Petrosian was perhaps, you know, didn't necessarily understand the position or understood it exceedingly well, um, it's not a move that I would have predicted. Um, black plays queen b8. Yeah, I'd, I'd have said that black stands well, really, but still. Yeah. I think it does, actually, yeah. Um, I've got the, the engines actually start itself up automatically, and uh, <laughs> I think it... <laughs> Yeah, that's helpful. <laughs> what does the engine reckon? Who's winning? Um, it's it's basically um, dead level. So, yeah. But I, th I think again, um, black's queen oh, side. Oh, I see. Not very nice, are they? Uh, um, no, I mean black has control of the black. Black's got some nice um, control of the black squares. Um, white's bishop on b two. You know. Is okay, so, you know, basically supporting the pawn but not really doing much else. What was uh, the idea I, behind queen to b8? Well, I think you want, might want to be able to play, um, you know, sort of stop white from playing knight to uh, knight to b4. This is covered twice. Well, uh, well knight to b4, I think. Yeah. Well, maybe, uh, maybe he wants to put something on f4. Yes, yeah. maybe he wants to put the queen on f4. Yeah, or not. Yeah, or not. Maybe. Um, it, I mean, I mean, black, black probably considers the, the the endings at least equal for black, without queens. Yeah. And the other thing, I'm, yeah. Um, the other thing I'm sort of thinking of is that you know, by playing queen to b8, you play rook uh, f to d8. You can play bishop to d6 and you know, force white to make a concession. Yeah. With his um, with his pawn structure, you know. And again, you, you've got you got a little bit of control over over b4, so yeah. Mm. White now continues with knight to c1. Now I, I actually don't. I'm not convinced by this sort of maneuver, <laughs> but um, we shall see how the game unfolds. Um, bishop oh, b4. Well, he, he must be coming to e5. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He wants to target the c6 pawn, doesn't he? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And also, um, a knight on d3 comes f4 as well. This is true. This is true. So, yeah. So, uh, black now continues with bishop to d6, forces a concession from white. So, yeah. white plays white plays g3. It's obvious the f4 square is a bit of a a bit of a a thorn sore point at the moment. Yeah. 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 And I suppose if black has no white squared bishop, you're quite happy to. Weaken those uh, white squares around uh, around your king. So, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking that white wants to get the dark squared bishops off the board. Yes, I think that will be good. Uh, sort of good for him if he can do. <laughs> right, it's true, but defending the deep one might be a bit difficult afterwards. Um, you don't necessarily have to defend it. I mean, yeah, well, it's going to be a long time before he's going to be attacking it. That's what I was sort of coming to. You know, you'd normally bring one of your rooks behind it. Um, I mean, black has very, very good control over the d5 square. You know, so white is never going to have your white can never play d5 himself. Um, you want to try and actually use those outposts on c5 and, and e5. I think this this whole position centres around the pawn on c6 and the pawn on d4, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's what it's about, I think. Yeah, and in these sorts of positions that. Um, Early on, uh, when you know, White will try and keep the minor pieces on the board, um, and if Black can exchange, you know, sort of minor pieces, and I think Black's position is, uh, improves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Black now continues with Rook D8. Yeah. White plays Queen B2, and Black plays Knight B4, again covering the A6 form. Uh, White continues with Rook D1, and Black takes the opportunity of putting his other knight. On to d5 now and plays knight f d5. White plays queen e4. Uh, black continues with bishop e7. 
you know, you know, no doubt, you know, you've got the opportunity now of rerouting the bishop round to f6. Yeah. If you, if you so choose. White plays knight e2. Black now plays bishop f6. Uh, white plays waiting move, king g2. Black plays a5, cementing the knight on b4. Okay. And uh, what do you think white plays in this position? Play uh, rook ac1. Rook ac1 looks a very, very good move. Probably the sort of move I would, I would also choose or think about playing, but not to move played by Petrosian. I did drop a hint, yeah. I did drop a hint earlier on. Well, well, did he go G4? <laughs> Sorry? Did he go G4? No, no. It's a, so this is Petrosian, not Shearer. So <laughs> Very similar stylistically. Can you he vacated G1, so the knight could go to G1. Yes, in fact, uh, I did drop a hint earlier that I wanted to uh, find a game which had lots of backward knight moves and exchange sacrifices in. And this fulfills the first criteria in the fact that White now plays the move knight G1. Yeah, and three, five. This is the knight that went to A2. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's improved on, it's on G1 now. <laughs> yeah, it's by a rather sort of long route, sort of long winded route, it's going to sort of find its way into the game onto, onto a better square. You could have got there much quicker, Tony. You could have gone knight E2, knight G1. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Or if he just left his knight on G1 in the first place, the other one, it would already be there. Yeah, but you couldn't castle then, could you? So. Okay, anyway, um, after knight G1, black continues with uh, sort of a small improving move, queen B7. Now the knight comes to F3, and black now plays rook A to B8. Um, now we have rook AC1, as uh, Paul suggested earlier. And uh, black now plays h6. Strong move. Okay. We have another waiting move. Black, uh, sort of white now plays king back to g1. <laughs> and black plays knight to b6. Yeah. 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 This position is still considered to be sort of equal. Yeah. But, I mean, personally, I, I, I think that I'd, I'd rather be sitting on the black side and board than the white side here. Yeah. Mm. The structure hasn't changed really. No, no. Apart from no. apart from chucking in a six, h six. Yeah. yeah. yeah I would, might have to worry about Black plays c five. Yeah. I keep on expecting him to play c five. He's yeah, not exactly. doing it. Um, I mean, it yeah. looks like the right thing to do, doesn't it? But the trouble yeah. is, Black it gives White d four. Yeah. Black, Black probably thinks he, he doesn't want to play c five to keep the d four weakness. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah. Um, and the bishop weak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's certainly a very interesting strategic struggle, this game. Oh, it is. It is. It is. Um, but uh, we shall see how things unfold now. Mm. Uh, white decides that he doesn't want to trade his white squared bishop and drops it back to e2. And black is quite happy to improve his position by playing. Yeah, I, well, I'm just getting a bit of lag, so just bear with me for a second. I'm going to stop it. Yeah. Right. Okay. What is Sorry, folks. Um, yeah, I, I, I was getting a, bit, I'm getting a bit of lag with... Um, so I've got the engine up, which I want, pro, I want to have up for later, because it does the, the nature of the game does change, but I'm finding a, one or two minor technical issues that if I stop and talk, um, then the sort of, uh, I'm, I'm not actually... Uh, getting getting response straight away out of out of chess face, but anyway, um, I think after Bishop E two, uh, Black now plays Knight six to D five, and uh, White now decides to play Knight to D two. Why didn't he put the, put the Knight on E five? Yeah, E five. Yeah, got some pressure on C six. Yeah, I think that would be uh, that would have been the uh, yeah a much better move. A better move. Um, I've got yeah, the engine up. I thought that Petrosian was a world champion. I never thought it. Ah, no, he's, he's rubbish, this Petrosian fella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He struggled to get in the Camberley 18. Yeah. 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 Or even the 18. <laughs> if you play 95, um, funnily enough, 
Um, that is considered, um, the engine's actually saying uh, it's changing its assessment from level to about minus 0.8 because, um, no, it's dropped to about minus 0.5 because it allows white to play bishop takes e5. Or sorry, yeah. black to play bishop takes e5. Yeah. Um, or knight a2. Um, so that's what, uh, that's what Fritz, Fritz is saying. Oh, yeah, knight a2 means that yeah. he's hitting the b3 pawn. Yeah, yeah. So knight d2 is played probably because you have to defend against that threat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bishop to g5. So, okay. I prefer black here. Yes, yeah. But the nature of the game is going to change very, very rapidly now. Um, and play f4. Okay, doesn't play f4, but what does white play? What does white play in this position? Doesn't play f4 immediately. Yeah, um, I've I'm, I'm actually, I've actually got the engine up, and it says f4 is is the best move. So, uh, but the move chosen. Yeah. Uh, rook c5. Rook c5 is the move played. Yeah, hitting the a pawn. Hitting the a pawn. So. And threatening knight c4. Yeah. Black decides to play bishop to e7. Oh boy. Right. Okay. Can now, take the pawn. Now we take the pawn. And that is in fact the move that uh, that uh, that sort of white chooses. So right. he saw all this when he played knight a2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. I'm very I doubt deep thinking. <laughs> Mm. I'm just uh, gonna. I, uh, just bear with me for. Uh, a, for yeah, us. black's threatening bishop b4, winning the rook. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah but he doesn't win the rook because he can go to a6 at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I think we're. I think we're back in the room. I think we are back in the room. Yeah. Bishop b5, rook c5, bishop e7. And rook takes a5. Yeah. So the nature of the game has changed dramatically now. And now white play. Uh, now black plays knight a2. Bishop d3. I'm gonna cheeky. Yeah. All right. Just bear with me. Yeah. Bob the threat. Okay. I'm. Um, just having a few technical problems here, folks. Uh, so, I don't know. do you want to turn the engine off? Is that going? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, but it's not turning it off. Okay, I've, I've I've killed it. So, right. So where are we? I'm just going to pick up the game again from where we are. Uh, so you went bishop d3 yeah. g. That's right. Yeah, I've got. I'm I'm back after rook a5, knight a2, bishop d3. And g6. Yeah. Obviously, we have, uh, have the obvious threat to uh, to stop. Black's um, got several threats. Yes. Knight c3. Knight c3 is a threat. So, but White now plays queen f3. Right. Okay. Can't he play bishop b4 now? Uh, bishop b4 is good. Uh, I okay, think six. And then knight c7 wins the, the rook, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, uh, no, you've got, you've got rook takes c6. Oh, you've got rook takes c6. Sorry, that, I'll just put that on the board. Um, right, yeah, we'll right. Yeah. Okay. The bishop b4. Look okay, it's... Uh, okay. It's vicious to me, but anyway, yeah. come on. Yeah, in this position, position you'll say you play bishop to b4. Rook a6. Rook a6. Yeah. Knight c7 is no good, is it? Oh, knight c7 doesn't work. No, you could play bishop takes d2 here. Yeah, bishop takes, yeah. I um, think you say, you're, you're suggesting play bishop takes d2, something like rook takes. Yeah. Now, two. queen takes b3, maybe. Queen takes yeah. b3, yeah. You can. Yeah, queen takes b3, rook takes c6. Queen game. takes a4. Yeah. And you'll level on material. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing knight b4, can't you? 
Yeah. Might be four wins, isn't it? Right. So let's let's, let's, put, let's, rock. let's put on the board. Queen takes B three. No, but knight knight to B four. Yeah, we got rook A five because the bishop's not on it anymore. The A two knight. Is that the one you wanted to put on there? So we yep. go back to yeah, go back to here. Why why is this winning? I think we're just going to. Are we just. Is Mike just putting his rook back on C5 here? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. Go All on, right, take the point. Take on. Yeah, but if you look, if you, if you play queen takes B2, um, I think I've played rook takes 6 6. Colin, you suggested playing queen takes A4, but I think black would just play, or so white would just play. Uh, I think can't play rook. No, you've got to be careful with that because you're going to get full. Yeah, you've got night you've got night coming to be four here, haven't you? So yeah. Right. So don't play that. Well you had rook C four actually. Yeah. 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 That's well, that's so sorry, did you put the rook back? Yeah. But sorry, I might this might be rubbish I'm looking at as usual. Probably. <laughs> You're trying to sacrifice something on East. I want to play yeah, rook takes g6, g6, but it's probably rubbish. Yeah. But bishop takes g6, pawn takes bishop, rook takes e6. I don't know. Probably not enough. Yeah. My famous one piece attacks. Yeah. Queen can come back to e8. Mm. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it's quite there yet to to play like that. But. No. Not that. Yeah, okay. But probably not. No. So uh, yeah, the game continue after the game continuation. Queen f3. Uh, black plays queen to c7, hitting the rook the other way. So what should white play here? Ooh. Don't tell me he played rook c5. He did indeed play rook c5. It's the obvious. That square bishop becomes enormous. Yes. Rubbish at the he it. Yeah. I did so I did actually sort of drop it out. the other hint I dropped I wanted to find a game which had an exchange sacrifice in because he was quite renowned. Yeah. So now he played Rook C five. The dark square push up becomes enormous. Yeah. And suddenly you've uh, right? so also got a possibility of the knight coming into D six, haven't you, Tony? You have indeed. You suddenly got um your black square bishop breaking down on the king side. Um, black is, you know, going to be weak on the black squares. You know, your knight's got knight in a two. White has a passed a pawn. Uh, the whole character of the position has been changed, and you do yeah. that. Did this, did this happen in the game, Tony? This happened in the game. Did he have to take it then? It looks... um, okay, if you don't take it, don't take it. You're a pawn down. You just yeah, pawn down. And yeah. Yeah. Be a yeah. Um, you know. What what else what else would you play here as black if you don't take it? You know, not only you're pawn down, but you're going to have that weak c6 pawn. Yeah, no yeah, yeah, so, but but taking it's horrendous. Though, it's really... yeah, it's absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, white's. You know, I don't think white's play was necessarily the best up to um, you know. This part of the game, you know, so about the opening to the middle game, um, I think there's probably lots of cases where we could, you could find better moves. But uh, you know, once you found this idea of you know, sort of picking up the A5 pawn and making that exchange sack, uh, White's position just becomes tremendously powerful here. I think. Now, what's move 36? So, next move played is knight to B4, and White now plays Bishop to C4. Which was given as an exclamation mark. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking if I was if I was black here, I'd want to be start talking about organize, trying to figure out how to organize the defence, because white's yeah you know, white's going to be attacking. So, yeah, the so black now plays f5. Yeah. Does make quite a big concession here because that e6 pawn is going to become. Uh, yeah, it stops oh. the knight coming into e4 and then d6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably, probably in that case you have to play that. So rook e1, queen to e7, queen to e2, rook to e8, 
Okay. Between two e taken, yeah, you've taken away the e4 square from the knight, but there's another route into the game now, which is knight to f3. Oh, I thought it was going to go queen e5. Yeah. Um, it's putting knight in e5, I think. Oh, does play, does play, um, uh, e5 looks good to me. Yeah. Queen e5 looks very good. How did you stop it going to h8? Uh, queen h7. Queen h7. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I um, it takes. yeah, it's starting to um, start to look a bit creaky here. So, yeah, and you've still got that past day form to worry about. So, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, all else fails. Push the eight point. Queen comes to e seven, and in fact, the queen does come to e five. Yeah, e seven comes back to e two. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, you've got the threat now, obviously, bishop to e five. So black has to play. Um, Queen to e7. Knight to d4. Knight to d4, okay. Um, this, at this point, we're up to move 42. Uh, but so what would white, what, uh, what, uh, what would you think white can play here, as well as playing uh, knight d4? Knight e5. Knight e5 is good. h4 is interesting. <laughs> h4 is indeed the move that was played in the game. Wow. Um, Petrosian did consider this to be one of his finest attacking games. We now will see why. But uh, after a sort of very long strategical struggle, um, the whole yeah. character of the game is, is, is changed. H4. Knight to F6. Well, now E5, E6 as well. Yeah. Bishop E6 falls. Knight comes into E4. Knight defends it. Uh, by playing knight to d4 and black now plays rook d to b8. I think the f6 was marginally better, marginally better moves to play. Could uh, could uh, black take on c5? Um, so something it's, wrong. it's probably something wrong with it, but I just thought. I'd um, know. if you take off what you're thinking here, playing knight takes c5. Yep. Well, instead of, instead of rook d b8. Yeah. But there's probably something. Yeah, which way? Oh, is there a? Is there a? Something? You got. Um, I think you've got bishop to eight check. Yeah, eight check. Sorry. Yeah. 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 It's. Yeah. Okay. Um, no. So I think queen f six was considered to be a slightly better move, but now, black in the game playbook, b to d eight. Yeah. Okay. So we continue with h five. Yeah. Yeah. And minus f five. Yeah. Rook takes on d four. H takes G6, King takes G6. Now, um, I think we are now into German analysis, and I'm going to ask a question. Um, now, what square do you think the Black King is on at the end of the game? Uh, A2. You gone? John's gone for A. I'm going to make a note to see, see who see who actually gets closest. John's going for A2. Do you know this game? <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm thinking. Uh, there have been lots of strange something to A2 moves. King A2 would be... I don't think it quite works like that. You know, you don't suddenly sort of hint about a square you're going to end up pointing your opponent's king on. It, so. I think you're going to end up over on the queen side. You might end okay. up on H3, actually. H3. So we've got H3. I'll, I'll go... I'll change my mind and say H3, but I wouldn't be surprised yeah. by A2. Um, we've got Colin on the... Colin says the... Uh, Queen side. Be over to here. Yeah, I'll say a a seven. A eight. Yeah, a seven. Yeah, somewhere seven like that. Eight. Right. Okay. And we shall see who gets who ends up with being closest. You know. I think Bishop takes f five is going to be four. Next. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So Colin is actually spot on here. Um, White now plays Bishop f five. Yeah. Followed by Queen h five. Yeah. So this is where it starts to get really sort of quite exciting as a game uh, in terms of, hang on, just go with me for a moment. Right, yeah. So Bishop F5. So was Bishop F5 sealed? No, I don't know what, what point the, um, the game was adjourned. Um, because we're actually up to move, uh, where are we? King takes G6, Bishop, we're up to move 48. Right. So, 
Um, probably queen e5, queen c7 was move 41. So we're sealing it about that point. Right. Okay. Now, what happens Probably next? <laughs> yeah, I think you have, you have to pretty much be able to calculate this right to the very end. Um, and that's why I think the majority of it, or pretty much all of it, had to be a German analysis. Because I think there's no way that you could work this out over the board. But anyway, the game continues. Uh, Bishop f5. King f5 and queen h5 check. Uh, h5, yeah. Yeah. King to king to e6. Queen to g4, yeah. Queen to g4 check. And king to d5. Okay. So what how how does one continue here? Accurately. Queen f5. Queen f5. And white plays queen d5 and queen d7. Queen d7. Yeah. King takes c5. Mm -hmm. Oh, you like to play bishop d. Well, bishop d4. Rook, you can win the uh, rook, I suppose. Bishop d4, queen takes d4. How are you going to continue? Then win the rook. Oh, but then he's on f2, isn't he? Yeah. Um, well, that rook c1. On mate. Rook c1. C1 wins a queen, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. In fact, the right move is rook c1. Yeah. yeah. Bishop d4 is uh, doesn't quite doesn't quite work out for the reasons we uh, we sort of, yeah sort of mentioned earlier. So rook c1 check and knight c3. Rook c3, rook c3 check and king b6. Okay. And how does white continue? A5. A5, spot on. A5. Yeah. Now, interestingly, um, I think you have a, a choice of moves here. Because you play king takes b5, then queen, take, queen to b7 is good. Um, I think you can, you know, so queen a5 is playable. Uh, but the move played in the game by black was king takes a5. Yep. Uh, which was a mistake. Because you know, what happens now is queen a7 check. Queen a7. Yeah. King to b5. Queen to b7. Yeah. Queen to b7 check. King to a5. And how does white continue, continue now? Rook a1. Rook c1. Threatening rook a1. Yep. Ooh. And how does black defend against this threat? Queen e1. Queen e1. <laughs> <laughs> not quite not oh. quite oh rook rook um d1 check d1 check yes rook takes d1 and queen b2 yeah. okay okay queen a7 check and knight a6 and how does white continue now good mm. question you have to see, now bear in mind, you have to have actually worked this position out from uh, B4. Bishop F5. Yeah, B4. B4 wins. B4, yeah. B4 wins, yes. And after King takes on B4, Queen mm. to B6. Yeah. And uh, Black resigns. Yeah, Why couldn't he play Queen takes B4? Um, I think it's after Rook A1. It's a Rook A1. Yeah. I think that, yeah, as you say, for the Queen takes B4. Then rook, a yeah, rook A1 wins. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. uh, yeah. Very clever. Yeah. Mm. So, in fact, the winner, suggesting that the king ends up on B5, I think it's Colin who said, on the queen side. <laughs> yeah. uh, A2's on the queen side. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, I can see uh, the queen H5. And I think also, in terms of preciseness, then A2 is, in fact, nearer to B5 than any other. Yeah. I mean, that was a tremendous game. That was an astonishing game, yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, that had everything, didn't it? They definitely yeah. got their money's worth. Absolutely, yeah. So. Yeah, knight A2 was the key move. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember that manoeuvre. Yeah. <laughs> also, also including it... Um, with you know, including knights of g1 in the sequence as well. Oh, knight g1, knight g1 is wonderful. 
Yes. Yeah. You know. I can't imagine Kasparov would play like that. <laughs> no. Um, it did remind me a bit of the Kasparov Topolov game, which is one of yeah Kasparov. Funny, I was thinking of bringing that sometime. Yeah. Because that is a fantastic game. I've got it in my books. Yeah. And I think if you, if you do, then you probably need to devote the whole evening to it because there are just so many complicated variations. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic yeah, it's, game. It's, it's an astonishing game. Right. Yeah. But uh, there you are, everybody. Welcome, um, Tony. Thank you very much, Tony. Very enjoyable. Thank you very much, Tony. Yeah. yeah. yeah.